Batman should be allowed to put down criminals who have gone too far. My bad. Excuse me. I have to tell you, Jimbo, your gun has come in handy. You managed even in my twisted game to keep everyone alive. But at what cost? Batman is an intriguingly ruthless character. As I'm sure most of you know, Bruce Wayne is a man who loses both of his parents in a single night to a mysterious criminal named Joe Chill. This single traumatizing event ignites Bruce and inspired him to avenge his parents' deaths by fighting crime in Gotham as the vigilante Batman. Vigilante being the single most important word that I'll be using to present my argument in this video. The sole reason that most iterations of Batman doesn't kill is because the man under the cowl, Bruce Wayne, doesn't want anybody to go through what he went through. If Batman took the life of a criminal, it meant that he would potentially be taking away a person that somebody else out there cares about and relies on. Batman the Vigilante, the superhero who seeks justice for Gotham, existing for as long as he has, literally only serves to shoot himself in the foot. Because 9 times out of 10, Bruce isn't facing off against sound-minded citizens who temporarily lost their way like Joe Chill. I cannot stress enough that Joe Chill was first written to be a random mugger who was low on cash and shot the way out of sheer nervousness. Eventually, we got more versions of Joe Chill who shot the wins on purpose as part of a gang hit. Some who shot the wins because he wanted to be more respected in the criminal underworld. And even one beloved version who shot the wins because Martha was investigating an international ring of child diddlers. The hilarious part is I actually think that some versions of Joe Chill could have been unironically reformed by Arkham Asylum. Nowadays, the vast majority of Batman's rogues gallery have been written into a corner to be irredeemable sociopaths paths, who either take pleasure in taking as many lives as possible, or who gladly take as many lives as possible while running their criminal empire. Batman's trusted code doesn't work in the present day because every time that he chooses to put criminals like Scarecrow Bane and the Joker behind bars, only for them to escape over and over again, proceeding to canonically wipe out large chunks of Gotham off of the map. Getting endless amounts of innocent people killed by said criminals. He's making his entire reason for fighting crime in the first place pointless. Batman was originally written to be a master detective, but not even he can figure out that by continuously doing the same routine over and over again, he's inadvertently getting incalculable amounts of people to grow up without parents, without brothers or sisters, and worst of all, without justice. The night is young and still I thirst. Ah! Oh! From villain. Ah! Well, that's not entirely true. There are a few versions of the Caped Crusader who were characterized to be a little bit more sensible, with one of my all-time favorites being written by the legendary Dwayne Capizzi. He's one of the geniuses behind Superman Doomsday, and he also wrote 39 episodes on the 2004 Batman series. Batman vs. Dracula was a massively crafted original movie from the mind of Dwayne Capizzi, which told the story of a Batman who understood when he was out of his league, and most importantly, when it was time to stop giving his first chances to change their ways. We're not going to be jumping into the entire movie here, just the part that's relevant to our discussion, but if you haven't, you should definitely check this movie out. I am willing to split the take 50 50. Oh. Tipped off by another inmate who claimed to have hidden millions of dollars somewhere within Gotham Cemetery, the Penguin and Joker escape Arkham Asylum again. Ah, <laughs> uh, Joker just got another resident of Gotham killed. You gotta be. After Joker not so politely passes up the opportunity to work with Penguin on acquiring the cash, he gets some instant karma when Batman finally shows up and starts to pursue him. We're on the verge of greatness. We were this close. Penguin getting a moment to look for the money without being interrupted, stumbles upon the tomb of Dracula and accidentally aids in his resurrection. Dracula's first form is freakishly terrifying in this movie. He kinda moves like the Wendy goes from Until Dawn. Though since this movie came out years in advance, there could possibly be some hidden inspiration there. After being cornered by Dracula, Penguin is mind controlled into becoming his loyal servant. Being given the task of keeping watch while he recovered and was able to regain his full strength. Meanwhile, Joker shockingly self deletes himself in this movie. By accident, of course, and Bruce Wayne seemed genuinely troubled by this. What about that guy, Bruce? I bet his family was waiting for him to get home or does he not matter to you as much as your clown BF? Tonight, Joker met his demise. I lost Joker, 
I'm not gonna lose anyone else on my watch. Penguin's trail went completely cold. Did you even try to find Penguin? Nope! World's greatest detective everyone. This movie is actually really solid. It's just a little goofy sometimes, which is part of the charm. Batman and Dracula would battle against each other several times over the course of this movie, with every match ending in a draw, until Dracula would become too powerful for Bruce to realistically contain, leading to him making the ultimate decision and ending Dracula's long life. There are admittedly interpretations of the Batman who wholeheartedly reject the idea of taking the lives of his most heinous criminals, and do it quite well. The main problem with these iterations of the character are that they fail to provide believable alternatives to dealing with said criminals. It's undeniable that every single criminal in Gotham Prison and Arkham Asylum can escape literally whenever they want, in every single medium, games, comics, and TV shows. The vast majority of Batman fans who subscribe to the idea of his core beliefs agree that his encounter with the Owlman in Justice League Crisis on Two Earths was one of the best encounters of his justice overcoming evil. In case you guys haven't checked this movie out yet, the Owlman was in the most simple terms, an alternate universe version of Batman who learned that his parents were actually criminals before they died, causing him to snap, choosing from then on to walk a path of darkness instead of light. The Owlman believed that humanity was a disease, and therefore the only fitting cure would be genocide. Batman ends up inadvertently getting the Owlman killed, while he was in the process of achieving his ultimate goal. There is a difference between you and me. We both looked into the abyss, but when it looked back at us, you blinked. Now, I believe that Batman did the right thing. The Owlman was a borderline psychopath and he needed to be put down. My question for the purest Batman fans is, how does this resolution support the ideals of Batman? He had no way of knowing that the Owlman would have had a few more seconds to choose to save his own life while strapping him to a literal nuke and sending him on his way. Batman understood that the Owlman needed to be put down for the safety of humanity. So why doesn't he uphold the exact same standard for other unforgivable criminals like the Joker? Is it because he hasn't taken enough lives yet? The Joker as a concept is so unique. He literally has no redeeming qualities. He's a fully fledged sociopath who preys on the vulnerabilities and weaknesses of all of those who are unlucky enough to come into contact with him. The only way that he could possibly be stopped and has ever been stopped during his run as a character in the comics has been through death. Remember that Batman at his core is a vigilante. He doesn't need to be done criminals in order for him to effectively stop them, yet he chooses to do so anyway. He just arbitrarily decides that death would be going too far. Batman's unwavering willpower can be seen as inspiring, but it honestly just comes across as pride to me. Now, I hope you guys can at least understand where I'm coming from when I say that Batman should be allowed to put down criminals who have gone too far. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and please consider subscribing. One subscribe equals to one serving of bird doo doo that I'll personally drop on Joker's face. Thanks for watching, take care.